Welcome to Storytime with Camilla, with Camilla Voyez. Um, today we're doing it as a voice recording rather than a video. Um, yesterday I uh, recorded a video and so far it's taken about five hours and it still isn't up on YouTube. So I think the videos may be a little bit too uh, memory heavy. <laughs> So we're going to do a voice recording and see how we get on. Please do give me feedback as to whether this works for you or whether it's better if I do video, but in segments so that they're more manageable size. OK, so so welcome to Storytime with Camilla. And tonight we're going to be reading Dead Ahead. It's one of the stories in my collection, Broken Mirror and Other Morbid Tales. Eleanor sat on the sofa surrounded by empty cola cans and crisp packets. The only source of light was the television, muted so she could hear the soft, static hiss of the baby monitor. Beside her, a stack of unopened mail threatened to topple and fall. The telephone rang intermittently, always left unanswered. She couldn't remember where a mobile was, but the battery was probably long dead if people were resorting to the landline to reach out to her. Obscured by shadows, family portraits clung to the walls. Reminders of recent times full of smiles and laughter. The three of them, before Chris left. Or was he evicted? It didn't seem to matter now. It wasn't as though he had tried very hard to return. Beyond the heavy curtains, a groan of electrical machinery approached. Binde? Perhaps they would take the dead and dying flowers that crowded around her front door. She would probably need to move them to the gate first, but that would involve opening the door, stepping outside, feeling sunlight on her face, none of which she was ready to do. And what if Rose needed her while she was gone? The baby monitor hadn't communicated anything louder than a soft hum for hours. Or was it days? But the moment she left the house, even for a second, would be the moment her daughter needed her most. Keeping Rose safe was the only thing that mattered now. Rose. Eleanor picked up a pile of letters, brown envelopes, bills probably, a couple of hand-addressed letters, her mother's handwriting, and dozens of squarish envelopes stiff with cards. She returned them to the coffee table unopened and sucked, dreads, and sucked dregs of flat soda from an open can. Her teeth vibrated as sugar coated them. Her breath tasted stale. Maybe she was getting sick. The idea exhausted her. Everything exhausted her. She only had room in her head for one thing. Rose. It was just like Chris to abandon them when they needed him most. Even before he moved out, he spent more evenings at work than helping her take care of the baby. She couldn't remember the last time he had changed a nappy or tucked Rose to sleep on fractious nights. He'd escaped the prison of parenthood almost from day one and left her a sole inmate. Like that night a few weeks ago when Rose had been feverish, Eleanor attended to the screaming baby until she was too tired to stand up. Chris's mobile went straight to voicemail. The baby paracetamol did little to calm Rose's distress. Cries bounced off bedroom walls and echoed through Eleanor's pounding head. It was too loud to think. Should she call a doctor? An ambulance? The surgery thought her overprotective. They hadn't said anything, but she knew. She wanted a second opinion. Someone who would calm her fears or confirm that Rose needed urgent medical care. But Chris wasn't there. No one else was there. It was just Eleanor and the purple-faced monster alone, once again. No, monster wasn't fair. Babies cried. It was natural. What wasn't natural was having to do every single fucking thing, day after day, with next to no sleep. That wasn't natural, and Eleanor resented it. So she called me Shell. Her best friend, they'd worked together, parted together. Yes, the baby had meant they hadn't seen each other as much over the past year, but Eleanor could depend on Michelle. She wasn't just level-headed, she was the brightest person Eleanor knew. If anyone could tell her what Rose needed, it would be Michelle. 
Straight to answer phone. Fuck. Still, Michelle only lived a few blocks away. The car ride might calm Rose, and with the window open a crack, her fever might abate a little. It was settled. Rose struggled listlessly as Eleanor zipped a jacket over her onesie. Then they were in the car. Rose buckled into her seat and on their way. The living room light was on. Michelle was home, thank God. With the baby nestled against her chest, Eleanor rang the doorbell. She waited for what seemed like forever as the heat of Rose's forehead scorched her throat. No answer. She glanced around at the parked cars. Michelle's was there. She must be home. An icy chill doused her face as she saw another all too familiar car. She shrugged. It was a popular model and a common colour. It didn't mean anything. Even so, as she moved towards the living room, a shat sorry even so, as she moved toward the living room window, her breathing grew ragged and her heart pon pounded nervously. No, she was being silly. It only looked like Chris's car. Through the gap in the curtain she surveyed the living room, champagne and glasses, discarded clothes, Chris's briefcase, oh fuck no. She ran to the door and pressed the doorbell. She held it down, shaking with anger. Three evenings last week, four the week before. Work had been hectic. He was needed in the office. She was unreasonable to expect him to let his colleagues down so that she might bathe in peace. A window opened above and the flushed face of her friend peered out. Her friend. Eleanor shook her head and ran for the car. Michelle called her name. Wait, it isn't what you think. He... Oh, Eleanor, wait. Please, I'm your friend. Feet thundered down the stairs as Eleanor lay the still sleeping infant on the car seat and hurried to the driver's door. The car was locked and the engine started as two people ran into the street from Michelle's house, dressed in robes that fluttered like vultures' wings around their bare legs. She floored the accelerator pedal and took off. That had been three weeks ago. Chris hadn't stepped foot inside the house since then. The garbage truck had left the street and the room dis returned to near silence. Only the white noise of the monitor was audible. Eleanor wiped tears from her eyes. How long since she had slept in her own bed? Eyelids heavy like steel shutters. Damp lashes clung to each other. Her shoulders relaxed into sleep. A whooshing sound hurtled past her head from behind her, the sofa. Her left ear exploded in pain. Awake, she touched the ragged flesh gently. The stitches hadn't dissolved yet. The wound was still new, too fresh to heal, especially as she kept prodding it, like she had prodded Rose's motionless body. They were in the car. Elena... Elena <laughs> Eleanor's only thought was to get away. At the junction, she braked too late and too hard. Something shot forward, past her head, catching the edge of her earlobe. The windscreen exploded outwards, a white shape hurtled ahead. It flew across the street before it plummeted, bounced and came to rest in the gutter. Eleanor touched her bleeding ear and peered over the, her shoulder to the back, to the back seat. The baby seat was empty, the straps loose. Sweating, Eleanor unbuckled her seatbelt and opened the car door. The white, bundled, the white bundle remained where it had landed moments before. Unable to tear her eyes away, she crossed the intersection. Behind her, she heard voices getting closer, louder. She recognised them but didn't look away from the shape that would haunt every single moment of sleep until the day she checked out from life with a bottle of pills and a hot bath. She prodded the padded velour bundle with her fing fingertip and gasped as a glass shard buried itself into her flesh. There was a crowd now. People gathered in a circle. Someone touched her shoulder. Someone screamed. Maybe it was her. They pulled her away. She saw her car again. No scratch on the paintwork, only the shattered windscreen reminded her what had happened. Where's Rose? she asked. Michelle wrapped her in her arms, but she stank of Chris's sweat and Eleanor pulled away. 
Where's my baby? Chris bent down towards the bundle. A few hushed voices asked him not to touch anything. He picked the white shape up and rocked it. Tears poured from his eyes. You killed her, he growled. You fucking bitch. You murdered Rose. So that's the end. If you check out my website, www.camillavoyez.com and go into the isolation tank, you'll see links to other stories, both for you to read and read by myself, and links to free games and some good news stories uh, about the progression of the coronavirus and cures and um, vaccines. So it's worth checking out if you're feeling a bit low, if you're stuck at home and wondering when this will end. It isn't all doom and gloom. We will get through this. Okay, bye for now.